So this is part two of my series where I build a computer improviser in Max MSP. Um, what we see on the screen now is going to be the end stage of what we build today, starting from what we where we finished off in part one. Um, and just to show what that looks like, I am going to um, record myself into this buffer, and then it will, as soon as I'm done recording, it will detect all the points, all the onset points, all the attacks, uh, using the buff onset slice I, um, object from the Vacoma library, and it will arrange it on these 2D plotters as grains and between slice points, uh, and then we can play it back uh, through the sampler. All right, so let's record. Great, so let's hear what it sounds like. Or with the grains. So it's, it's snappier when it's at the onset slice points. And we're coming back here now to where we left off in the first video. So um, the, what we need to build out is um, a way, instead of to just load a corpus, to record into a buffer. Um, and then we need also uh, to include the onset slicer. And then finally, we need to create a version of this that instead of looking at grains, um, looks at slices of audio. So to do that, let's rework this corpus loading um, subpatcher. So we're going to need a record object and we're going to name it corpus. We're going to need two more inlets. Oops. One inlet for our ADC for the audio coming in and another inlet to toggle a stop and start. Um, so let's also put add in the main patch our ADC and let's meter that so we can see the microphone input that I'm talking into. And so we want that to go to the, the audio is going to go to the middle, and then we need a toggle to start and stop recording on the left. Great, so back in here, actually, let me just arrange this a little bit. Okay, back in here, um, we want to, we're going to want a send record toggle, because we that may be useful in other places in the patch. The toggle should also go to the record object. So let's take a second, let's make a second one of these. We do not want the destination gain to be changed. Well, the destination being to be one, though we do want the source and the destination. So that's the, the only change is that the destination gain is different. Um, and so we want a similar message here. Uh, we only need the uh, initial, ch the first channel to go into there. And so all we need to do from here then is to bang that out when it's done. Oh yeah, we'll also want to crop the buffer. All right, okay, so for the buffer length, we wanna give it some long, let's give it a 10 minute, uh, 60 seconds. So that's a 10 minute uh, maximum time there. Uh, okay, so we're going to need to do a couple things. We're going to need to, let me just make this in a comment. We're going to need to, um, upon finishing recording, we're going to need to first uh, crop the buffer. And secondly, we will need to copy the contents over to corpus.mono and finally we will need to uh, bang out a 
flag that says, all right, when it's finished, when one and two are done. And I think those are the only things we need to do. Um, yeah. Great. Okay. So if we have a select zero object, uh, actually we want select one and zero. So one will be when it starts recording and zero will be when it stops. So for the one, so when it starts, we'll want to start a clock. So clocker, and that should go into an int box. So on select one, we want to start the clocker. In fact, we don't even need the select one. For a clocker, we actually want to start it and stop it directly with a toggle. Okay, so just as a sanity check, let's test that. Yeah, so it resets every time. That's what I wasn't 100% sure about. All right, so we're going to save that in the clocker, and we want a select zero. All right, and now we want to have an order of operations here. So I think we want trigger, bang, bang, bang. The first bang will... Um, bang out that uh, integer, so the, the, the total duration that we've been recording. And then we will want to send a crop message. Um, and that is going to go to our buffer here. Because that's the buffer we're analyzing from. So it's important that it see the correct length uh, and we're not analyzing all this empty space and or or and then we have all these grains of silence. All right, so that's our first step. The second is to then copy over the audio from corpus to corpus one. And then finally, we will want to send a bang out our flag. So that's all from select zero there. Now, unless I'm forgetting something, I think that should do it. All right, so the next step now is to do our onset detection. Uh, but before that, let me just show, I found one mistake uh, here where I was um, copying the buffer over after cropping it. So you want, of course, you want to crop the buffer um, after you copy the data over. So I just switched to these two wires. Um, okay, great. So to find our onsets, we're going to use fluid.buffonsetslice. The source uh, is going to be corpus.mono, our audio. And then we need a place to store our indices, so the slice points, and we'll call that onsets. So for that, we'll also need a buffer with the same name, onsets. And then to do the analysis, we just simply send it a bang. And now we see we've populated this with a bunch of high numbers. So they're higher than one. So we can't see them there. Uh, but we can visualize them nicely with fluid.waveform. So with this object, uh, I believe we can just tell it what buffer to, that we want to, it to uh, show as a waveform and then also uh, give it our onset slices. So I believe if we just do clear and then waveform corpus dot corpus dot mono and then we want to give it slices onsets corpus dot mono uh, hopefully now if we chain this together we will have visualization and there it is so we see our onset slices from the audio that we recorded into the recorder moments ago. Okay, so now we're going to want to make a version of this analysis here that we did from the last video, uh, but one that instead of looking at every um, 500 milliseconds like we have here, we want it to look at the duration between these slice points. Okay, so now that we are done with the slicing, 
Um, let's just double check that it is uh, the slicer is working if we're recording in. So recording in, oh, recording in, recording in. Ba 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 ba. And then our analysis works, our slices work. Great. So now we want to have uh, the equivalent of this analysis, but using our slice points. So let me start by just copying this whole thing over. Uh, and then I'm going to go in here, modify read only, and then save it as MFCC slices. And then we're going to change this to MF, oops, MFCC slices, and we'll also name it MFCC slices. And instead of the 500 here for the grain duration, we want onsets. We want our the name of our buffer that's storing our slices. Great. So now we can open this up and we see that um, a lot of it is going to be the same. What's going to change is our make note. So we'll need to call, we'll need to peek at the indices uh, buffer for that. And then also, of course, the analysis, we're not just looking at grains. So we're going to get rid of a lot of the stuff in here and replace it. So in fact, at least, um, at least this we'll need to get rid of. So we'll go ahead and delete that. Um, now, let me just look at my sketch pad on the other page here. Okay. Okay, so for the analysis, we'll want to set our source to onsets. And then from there, we're going to need to have an order of operations because we're going to need to uh, have a buff to list, send out as a list all of the indices. Then we're going to use ZL stream to stream it into groups of two. Um, and then from there, give it the start frame and the number of frames. Um, great. So. Let's start at the top. So we want trigger, um, bang, symbol, and ZL clear, because that's going to clear our uh, ZL stream object. So that can go into there. Let's start actually with the um, ZL stream two. Uh, so that can go here. And then we'll need our fluid dot buff to list and we want to set a max size really high in case there are more than 256 onsets. So same as here, um, it's ZL max size, we'll set it also to 99,999. Um, this can go into here. Uh, this will set the source and this will bang out the data. Now, if we see what that looks like, actually, that's not a good way to do it. Let's print it. If we send that here, there we go. There's, those are all our indices in twos. So we want to take the first one away from the, uh, rather, we want to have the second one minus the first one. So for that, we will need to have one of these reverse uh, objects like that. We'll initialize it with a float. So we'll have have it looking something like this. Going into here. Okay, let me just double check what I'm doing here. All right, and then we'll have the start frame. Okay, oh, so this is already connected how I want it to be. I feel like I should reconnect it. So the start frame here, and then 
going like that. And that I think should do it. One thing I do need to change here, of course, is num frames is not on sets, but number of frames is what's coming in to the message box there. And then these will all be the same as in the other. And great. All right, let's see if it works. There we go. So it's not going to play it back. Uh, but otherwise, so in here, we'll still be formatting it the same way. And we're going to add messages to change all these other variables. For now, we know that we're just going to be looking for the start and end times. Okay, so let's get rid of this at the top. Um, so we're going to need to peek on sets or rather our third argument so that it's variable. So we're going to need to peek it for our start frame and our end frame. We just need the integer that is going to be given from the KD tree, which is already coming in there. Trigger, integer, integer coming in from there. Um, the second one is to peak our start. First one is to peak our start point. And then we'll want our end point. So that for that, we'll need um, the 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 next indice the next slice point so we'll get that one first and then we'll join them together here and i believe that's all we need let's do a quick sanity check here great Okay, so it should be as simple as that. Let's see. So we're not getting playback. Okay, so I figured out what I was doing wrong. It's very simple. I had accidentally deleted the wires that go from this object to the master faders. So it's always something obvious in retrospect. Okay, so let's test it out now. So I'll record myself uh, making some sound. Uh, then we will do these analyses and see uh, if it works. And just for the sake of completion, let's look at this, uh, make note for the slices. So we're peaking the onsets, um, the onset that's called back from the KD tree, and then until the next one, playing it back. And of course, we need to change it from samples to milliseconds and then format our note there. So let's do it. Training, training. Boop, 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 bop, 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 Now our grains. Beautiful. And now our onsets. That's pretty good. What I'm going to do is a couple of useful things here. So we need our threshold. Let's just turn our threshold down to 0.4. Great, we got a few more. Now let's do the analysis. There it is. Maybe there's not enough stuff to get so many different labels, so let's do that. Okay, there we go. Great. Okay, so that concludes everything for today. And uh, I'll see you in part three.